Welcome to my channel, The Binge Eating Therapist. I'm Sarah, former binge eater turned psychotherapist, and my mission is to use this space to bring content to you to help you understand your struggle with food and break free from binge eating. Now, today's video is gonna be especially helpful for you if you are somebody who feels like they just keep failing at their binge eating recovery. It's also gonna be very helpful if you are in that place where you feel like recovery just seems like a really long way away and that it's gonna be really hard work to get there. I want to start off with a Wayne Dyer quote. And Wayne says, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So I think we need to change the way we look at recovery in order to get there. I think the current thinking that uh, most of the models use is not helpful. And I think it keeps a lot of people stuck. So a lot of the time we talk about recovery as being getting from point A to point B. It's this journey, you go from one to the other. Now, I often see those diagrams out there where they say, you know, what I expect recovery to look like, and you've got the two points and a nice straight line. And then they say what recovery is actually like, you've got the two points, and there's a squiggly line going all over the place to kind of um, demonstrate going backwards and forwards and the slips and the ups and downs of recovery. Okay, that makes sense up to a point, but I think it's still not a helpful way of looking at recovery. It still shows recovery as a journey it shows recovery as there's this destination that you get to where you are finally recovered and feeling great. You know, it makes me think of when people come to therapy and I'll ask them what they want and they say, I want to be happy. And so they view happiness as well as this destination, this place they get to when they've sorted out all their problems, when they've got all their ducks in a row, then they will finally be happy. As opposed to happy or happiness is an emotion and our emotions change. We experience these emotions and they just, um, well, no emotion stays the same. We have a whole array of feelings. And so I want to draw some parallels here with binge eating recovery, as in recovery is an experience and it's a state of being as opposed to a destination or a place where you finally arrive. Now that might sound disheartening, but trust me, this is really good news. Um, and I'm going to go on to explain why that is. So the way I started to think of my recovery, which I think was enormously helpful, was to think of it as two states. So rather than getting from point A to point B, um, I think of it now as you're in state A or you're in state B. And the states are states of being. So state A is the food chaos, it's the food obsession, it's the like feeling horrible in our bodies. And state B is your recovered state. Now there's probably some work to be done on defining what your recovered state is, because a lot of people can confuse that with my recovered state is like eating perfectly or sticking to this diet or this rigid way of eating and being really controlled around food. Um, and that's all actually part of state A, part of the chaos and the binge restrict cycle. So for me, how I often define recovery or state B, it's a place of freedom, like where you're free around food, where your choices feel like choices. It's not saying no to food because you cannot say yes, because that's the diet mentality. But it's also not saying yes to food because you cannot say no, that's the binge mentality. So it's not about perfect eating, it's about freedom. Now, a lot of people, when they've struggled with binge eating and they know state A very well, still have periods of times, maybe some respite where they feel like actually they are in state B. Maybe you have a day where you weren't thinking about food all day, or you've been doing some work on intuitive eating and you've been experiencing what it can feel like to feel free and have permission around food. So rather than it being this point, point B, that's so far away, it's a change of state. And I think the process of recovery, because it is a process, I don't think the word journey is helpful, is about finding out how to spend more time in state B. It's learning how, when you are in state A, what are the things you need to focus on or where do you need to set your intentions in order to move you from state A toward state B. Because when we learn that we can influence our state, we have 
the power and the resources and the willingness within us to get ourselves into state B, that is what recovery for me is all about. So you might find yourself in state A a lot at the moment. You're struggling with binge eating and it feels like it's taking over your life. Because this is your most predominant state, now it's become like your identity. And identity is really important when it comes to this work. The more you move yourself into state B and the more you practice being in state B longer, the idea is then that you spend more and more time in state B. You might sometimes slip into state A again, but you recognize that you're in state A and you start to learn the things that you can do to bring yourself back into state B. What this does is it protects against that catastrophic thinking that is so derailing. I don't know how many times I thought I had got this licked, I had finally recovered, I was never gonna binge again. And then when it seemed to come back or I was binging again, it was soul destroying. And I know that sounds dramatic, but I'm guessing those of you who've been there and get it um, can appreciate that that is really the experience of it. And then you feel even further away from where you want to be and you all kind of beliefs that you can ever get there are just destroyed. It destroys um, our self-trust because we're making promises to ourselves over and over again about what we're gonna do and how we're gonna eat. And every time we break those promises to ourselves, it continues to like erode and, and chip away at us. That's one of the horrible things about struggling with binge eating is that it, it really damages the most important relationship in your life, which is the one with yourself and the one with your body. So when we're viewing it actually as rather than we're on this really long journey, because when you, when you binge again, you feel like you're back to square zero. You feel like you've got a lot of work to do. And that means quite often when you feel like you're back at square zero, that state can go on for like weeks or months. You're just in it again. But when we change the way, like we change our perception of this as two places that we can be in, two states that we can be in, when we're in state A, okay, we don't like it. It feels horrible. There's gonna be some difficult feelings that come up but we can learn how to get ourselves back into state B. And I think this whole idea of recovery as this place that you get to where suddenly you're, not suddenly, but like, or you do all the work and if you do enough work, if you work hard enough at this, you can find um, complete freedom where you never have to think about this again. I do think for the majority of people, this is something we have to manage for the rest of our lives. And that sounds horrible at the moment, because at the moment you're spending a lot of time in state A. So you think managing it for the rest of your life means it's gonna be a daily battle. It's not, trust me, there's freedom and it's, it's absolutely worth it. But I think if I sit here and present myself as this aspirational figure who just lives in her state B and she never visits state A um, and she is completely free and feels amazing in her body all the time, I am doing you a disservice. I am setting you up because you're gonna use that as a model of being like, well, this is what this is where I should be getting to, which is why I think it's really important to be honest that, yeah, there are times when I might be struggling with PMS and I've got raging hormonal hunger and cravings that I'm not always particularly zen about. And I remember when I first started doing this work, you know, I would feel guilty if I was struggling and I would feel like I was being a hypocrite. So I think it's really important for me to be congruent and honest that I don't always find this stuff easy. However, my state A is nothing like it used to be. I mean, it, back in my full on binge eating daily struggle days, you know, I would go to bed so full that I, I couldn't sleep and my heart would be racing and I would have acid heartburn and all these kinds of things and I don't go back to there. But neither is food always easy but what I've learned is that I'm in a if I, if I find myself in a place where food is feeling difficult again I know there are certain things that I can do that moves me back over into my state B where I want to be and where I now feel like that is me I'm now more identified with that state B so I think finding the things that move you towards that is really crucial as well so I'll just share a couple of mine if I was if I binged um, the night before when I went to bed, I would say to myself, okay, I want to find balance again tomorrow. I am going to eat whatever I want 
but the only condition is I have to really, really try and enjoy it. That was it. And I found that one really helpful at trying to rebalance myself. If I'd fallen back into, uh, let's say, several weeks of binging, which, which did used to happen, I would say to myself, OK, um, tomorrow my intention is to get in touch with my hunger. Now, I'm not talking about letting myself get hungry. I'm not talking about, oh, I can't eat until. I'm talking about having had two weeks of binging, I'd not felt hungry, I'd not felt satisfied. So if the next day I could set an intention to get in touch with my hunger, then when I ate, I could experience that satisfaction again. If I went from weeks of binging into just trying to do the three meals a day, like I would have been eating and I would have felt dissatisfied and that I found, I always found dissatisfaction with my food really triggering. So even now, if I eat something and I feel dissatisfied, it's not what I wanted. There's some uncomfortable feelings there that I've got to deal with. So I would say that every time you are in your state B, you are recovered. So rather than recovery being this place that you get to, like with happiness, if you felt happy now for some reason, you wouldn't <laughs> say to yourself, well, this is not real because I'm going to feel unhappy again. Mm, same with recovery. So I think when you're in state B, you are recovered. There's a good chance you're going to be pulled out of that recovered state at some point, especially in the beginning for a while. But every time you get back there, you are recovered, as opposed to recovery feeling like this thing you've been chasing for years. Because you've got this story now about how hard recovery is and about how you never make it. And every time you feel like you've messed up, that story about being a failure and never being able to get there is activated and that's gonna affect your behavior around food as well. So this is an idea I'm really excited about because I think for me, it was really liberating. I definitely went through this in my recovery. I hadn't put it together in words like I've managed to now in the same way uh, now that I do this for a living. And I have to learn how to talk about this stuff to try and communicate my experience. But when I look back, I realized that this was what I, was, what I started to do. So if people ask me about my recovery journey, like, when did you recover? I find that a really difficult question to answer, to be able to go, oh, it was uh, May 2018 or whatever, because I was moving in and out of it, but then I was having more and more time recovered. And then that started to, um, I just felt like I was coming back to myself again. Like I was spending more time being me because that binge feeling is like something else. I mean, it used to feel like this, entity that would visit me um, and I could just feel it there sort of on my shoulder and then when it would go it would seem like it would leave so for a long time I thought I was at the at the mercy of this because I had no power over whether it was there or not that's what it felt like in the confusion and the chaos but when I did the work and I started to learn actually some of the things the free will part of it is I can choose where to put my attention and intention at any time um, and I can use that in a way that's going to move me towards where I want to be, which is food freedom. And that's what I want for you too. So hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for all the support on this channel. I really appreciate it. And I will see you on the next video.